Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time uh, this afternoon to listen to me and uh, learn about uh, preparing for the product management interview. So in today's session, I want to focus on uh, you know how you go about preparing for the interview and including what do you do before the interview, what do you do you know, once you get a call. And uh, I want to talk about aspects that may be obvious to y'all, but I've seen in my experience uh, that interviewers, uh, you know, like when we share feedback, when we are uh, interviewing people, I've seen these common mistakes. And those are like low hanging fruits, I feel uh, anyone can kind of improve on. So we'll start from there and, and we'll get into our details. So yeah, uh, excited to be here. This is my first session. So please feel free to uh, whatever feedback you have. I've, I've shared my email in the end. So send send your feedback or your questions, etc. So so we uh, I can kind of keep on improving, right? So cool. Again, so thanks, and let us start. Let me get my presentation going. All right. Yeah, most importantly, right? Like to get. Uh, the disclaimer, this is again, no way it should be considered as an official response from any of the companies that I've worked for in the past. This is purely based on my experience and uh, whatever I have seen during my product management career in the last 10 years. And uh, kind of a, a list that I've maintained by myself where I have either I have made these mistakes or I've seen others you kind know, of uh, commit these mistakes, right? So it's just purely personal experience and please do not take it as an official response of any of these companies that I mentioned. All right, so <clears throat> about today's agenda, right? So uh, quickly talking about the background, <clears throat> we'll talk about what is product management, like a quick one-on-one. Uh, I want to make sure kind of your level setting on on what what does product man what do product managers do? Uh, we'll talk about pre-work and by that I mean what do you do even before uh, you get the call, right? Like obviously that is there's work that you would have to do in order to nail it. So I'll talk briefly about that. Then we'll talk about once you get the interview call, you know, what are the next steps and how do you use the pre-work in that? And then uh, number five and six, honestly, nowadays, because it's pretty much like virtual rounds, right? And unless once like things open up, I don't know when that will be, maybe sometime next year where you'll have the, on-site interviews in person, right? So, but I think uh, <clears throat> whatever we talk for number five will also be applicable to number six. So I hope, uh, and again, like if there's any deltas, we can feel free to reach out to me and then we can talk about that as well. Then uh, we'll also briefly talk about the writing assessment. I know some companies do it. And uh, again, it's kind of what you learn from all the points above, right? But it's just about uh, succinctly conveying the points. So, so we'll talk about that as well. All right, so quickly, <clears throat> what is my background, right? And why am I here? So I have been a product management in product management for the last 10 years and on consumer as well as enterprise products. And by con I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but by consumers, I mean, anything like, you know, Amazon is a consumer product. Enterprise is B2B, where Okta that I'm currently working on is a business to business offering. Even in at Amazon, I was in teams where we offer, we were helping businesses. Uh, similarly, so, so that's what I mean by that statement. So I have an undergrad in computer science and MBA in marketing. Uh, for product management, right now, as I said, I'm a group product manager at Okta, which is uh, into identity access management uh, on the cloud. And prior, and I recently started. This is very recent. It's uh, it's been a month so far. So I'm still learning. Identity is kind of a new space for me. Um, Amazon. I was for almost four and a half years, and I worked across various teams. Uh, Amazon Identity, like that's the retail identity team. Uh, so every time, basically, you use your username and password on Amazon or any third parties, like where you, know, you have social login, login with Amazon, login with Facebook, kind of a thing. So I used to do that for uh, Amazon. I also worked on Alexa shopping, which is voice-based shopping. So how do you reduce false positives? Because through voice checkouts, a lot of times uh, orders were placed that the customer did not intend to. And for whatever reason, it could be the background noise or the kids are playing with it. 
So I was on the team of the PM for risk reduction on that. And again, uh, the Amazon business is I was uh, the PM for acquisition and registration for Amazon business, which is nothing but a marketplace for businesses, right? It's Amazon, but uh, only businesses can shop there. Prior to that, I was at CVS Health. I was the PM for personalization. Uh, they have a 70 million personalized uh, members in their loyalty program called Extra Care. And I, I was the PM for personalizing their experience through like your mobile apps, on site uh, websites, through like, you know, coupons, et cetera. Like, so throughout your shopping journey, pretty much. And prior to that, I was in Sears and Kmart both because the platform, uh, I was the post order uh, product manager. So anything you do after the order is placed, that journey, I used to own that. Uh, prior to that, I was at a startup in Philly. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's about me. So let me quickly talk about like, what does a product manager do, right? <clears throat> and why is that important? Uh, I think because, uh, uh, lately, right, like every company has a product manager and I've seen the definition change and uh, different companies define product management role in a different way. So it's really important for anyone who's applying for a product manager role to understand what is the typical role of a product manager at that target company, right? And is it mostly executional or is it strategic? It's, you'll hear that a lot. I mean, throughout my career, I heard that in it's actually tactical versus strategic and I have to be like what does that really mean <clears throat> so that's why the most question marks there but pretty much it's like uh, if you're like a first time PM or you know, your junior PM well, most of your work would be around execution so the strategy is kind of being defined and you're driving the execution not that that execution may have a strategy of its own but uh, at, at a high level company level or product level strategy uh, it, it may be not you may not get as much exposure there early on again like that star just says unless you're at a startup where you can do all everything pretty much right then the other question i've seen people ask is how technical do i need to be right do i really need an undergrad degree in computer science uh, to be a product manager right so the the plain answer is no but it also depends on what kind of company that you're applying for, right? For example, let's say you have a role in obviously AWS, right? So you your customers are developers. So you need to understand technology uh, at, at a deeper level. But let's say you are in a uh, product manager for soft lines or, or for uh, checkout page or, or things which are more, uh, business, where, again, like, don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that you don't need technical expertise. It's just that you don't need as much, like you don't need to code, you don't need to know how to code, etc. Even, I don't think even for AWS, you actually need to code. But uh, because your customers are developers, it's better you understand how they, what are their traits and, you know, what are their pain points, etc. Like, for example, uh, when to use an API versus an SDK, should you have, should you support that functionality? Uh, what SDK should you build for all uh, OSs or only the OS that has majority of the population uses, etc. Those kind of trade-offs, right? Uh, so, yeah, and, and then that's, so you need to be technical depending on the kind of role. And then you have, uh, as I was mentioning, consumers, businesses, enterprises, and developers, right? So uh, typically consumer facing products and even uh, the products used by developers are very fast paced. And so AWS is an example for consumers. Facebook is an example, Amazon is an example. Because you have to keep moving fast. There are certain hypotheses that you will come up with, you test those. And you have to keep moving fast. And again, like the last point just reiterates that like there's a lot of experimentation, data analysis uh, that's required to be successful in, in those roles. So just kind of an overview of, uh, you know, what, what you need to look at when you're applying for that role and, and how do you do your research on what aspects are there. All right, so here what I've done, and again, like I know I have a bias. <clears throat> you will see that the sum of language overlaps with uh, the way Amazon, uh, you know, conducts its interviews or, or the leadership principles, etc. But I think I've learned a lot in my role there, and then through the interviews that I've taken, uh, and and I've seen, uh, what I've tried to do here is uh, kind of highlight what are the top traits that I personally feel 
a product manager needs to excel in to be successful. And I just list those down here. So number one is ownership, right? Like there's there's no clear job description. Uh, you will do it all. Anything that no one else does, you will be, you should be willing to do it. There is no boundary of like, hey, that's not what I would do, or that's not my role. You, it will be your role, right? From testing the software to talking to the salespeople, talking to end customers, talking to the BI teams to get data, everything. Like, so you will need strong ownership. <clears throat> Secondly, it's a very highly cross-functional role. And again, like the bigger or the larger the company, the, the larger that uh, the span of your uh, impact. So you definitely need leadership qualities and empathy as well. And I say empathy because a lot of times you would want to drive product decisions and get stuff done, uh, but there are genuine constraints. So it's not like one of the stakeholders is being difficult, but you need to understand what is that, uh, what are those constraints and and kind of uh, go from there, right? Secondly, again, number three and number four are kind of related. Every time you start a new role, like for example, I, I started at Okta right now. Uh, I, I don't know so much about the identity space. So I'm that's where I am right now. I just number three, I'm asking a lot of questions. And I've seen uh, people have this fear of being judged because they think it's a silly question or, you know, everyone else knows the acronyms uh, that are being used in meetings and, and you try to take notes and follow up, but it's just a lot. So like use your judgment, but definitely ask a lot of questions uh, to learn about uh, you know what? What is it that everyone's trying to do? Why? Why you're doing certain things, etc. And I've seen like not many people do that. I mean, I I used to be scared of asking those questions early on when I started, but I've realized that it's super important. And sometimes you asking that question kind of reiterates it for the others as well, right? And similarly, number four, like the five whys, is like deep. Like you have to get really deep into why we are. Solve trying to solve this and like so it could be like hey let's say increase conversion like why because then more customers will uh, you know finish their journey then what why why is that important because then that means that you know they are they enjoy coming to our site and finish they they enjoy shopping with us then why is that important similarly like you know you ask those five eyes and you get to the bottom of it for every question the other, I think the other four are as as you get uh, seasoned and as you start blending into your role, you'll see why those are important as well. But once you get one to four, you know, you kind of start, when you ask a lot of questions, you understand the tech so you can stand your ground. You understand the trade-offs because you understand why we are doing something and what is the most important problem to solve. Similarly, uh, how do you define success and how do you measure it? That also comes back to why we are doing this, like who's affected and what's the short-term goal, what's the long-term goal, etc. So always keep that in mind. And it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to fail. And it's okay to uh, be critical, like uh, be vulnerable about it and, and talk about it. Like, hey, I learned this, I, I failed in my experiment. Or this was my most important learning and, and how you applied that in the future. So, so make sure that, and I, why am I spending so much time on this slide is as you think about your examples in your interviews, you should kind of try and, and talk about these aspects in your examples and then, and, and, uh, you know, pick up like the top four. I mean, it obviously needs to be there, but you should definitely try and quantify these and say how you demonstrated these in your interviews. So let's talk about the pre-work a little and what I mean by that. So don't, I've seen a lot of people stress about, hey, you know, I'm not getting any calls. I keep applying and I keep getting rejects and these automated emails, et cetera. So, I mean, it's natural. I have faced that too in my B school as I was applying for internships and I kept getting rejected, but, uh, you kind of have to be persistent there. And it, it, honestly, it's not only for PM, it's generally in life, right? Like you keep trying and uh, you, you do what you can do and don't worry about the things you cannot. So you can apply, but you can't be, you can't control when you get the call, right? But in the meantime, right, the pre-work is make sure you have a schedule so that once you get the call, you are like, you're not running around like, oh, what do, what do I do now? Like, I have only like a couple of weeks and I have so much to cover. How how can I, you know, it's impossible for me to do everything. And 
in that quest, you will you will not end up doing any of it correctly. So make sure that you have a schedule and you've done your pre-work so that when you get the call, you're ready. Uh, third bullet is important too, as I was saying, depending on the type of company that you're applying for, they may ask different questions, right? So it's very important for you to know what are those questions, what are the types of interviews, and how are you going to be evaluated and you know how, how to be successful in those interviews, etc. So for example, like Facebook, Google, DoorDash, etc., they do focus a lot on case-based questions, at least early on, right? Where you'll ask you to know, like, hey, how would you design a, a washing machine or things like that? Or how do you measure success of Instagram or, or things like that, they will ask you. But uh, in my experience, I've seen Amazon would focus on behavioral questions. And that that is the crux of the interview, right? like on the leadership principles. I mean, there are case questions, but they're not as uh, frequent or they're not as many in that interview. So unless that role specific, like if you're, let's say, applying for a role for new initiatives, then yes, then it becomes super important how do you design stuff. So, but I would say following the 80-20 rule, 80%, you, you just, if you get your behavioral questions right, I think you have a fairly good chance to get through. And in this session, I think we'll focus mostly on the behavioral part just because there's so many variations of the design questions and maybe we can do like another session or something. So this is again, part of the pre-work as I was mentioning, right? So make sure that you have a schedule. Like for example, let's take a developer, right? Like when developers are applying for interviews, it's not like uh, they start preparing when they get the call. They they do all their work beforehand, right? Most of it at least. They'll find time, they'll practice their algorithms, they'll practice their pseudo codes and you know the speed at which they're solving questions, everything. So it's not like by chance that they would crack that interview. Similarly for product management, it's you you will be surprised how many people actually don't do this, right? And it's seen in your when you when you give the interview that even though you may have like great background and a lot of passion. But just that you haven't spent enough time on, on preparing and, and so make sure you don't do that. Use your time wisely. How, like, you know, again, this is just a sample of what something I would do, but feel free to kind of take this and tweak it and, and follow something similar. Again, I've highlighted the behavioral questions here just because we'll focus on that. But again, you need to come up with a schedule and it's it'll easily take a couple of months for you to, you know, you, so even if you're not getting the call right now, make sure you're practicing. Cool. Now what happens once you get the call, right? Yeah, you're all happy and you're like, hey, yes, I can I can crack it. So what to do now? First, let's talk about the first round of interviews. And typically in the earlier days, it was telephonic, now it's virtual. So by that, I mean, it's going to be like a video conference call. So <clears throat> how do you prepare for that? So yeah, I can't... Uh, tell you how important these two questions are. I think a lot of people, in my opinion, that I've seen do not prepare well enough for these questions. And that also uh, tells me that you know, you're not very serious about uh, your past experiences or you've not thought seriously about what you've done and why you want, where do you want to go? So uh, that's why I kind of listed this here. And no matter which company that you're applying to, right? Like it could be any of those companies mentioned before, or it could be any of the companies that are not on the list, but everyone will ask you, hey, why don't you introduce yourself or walk me through your background or tell me about yourself, things like that, right? So make sure, and we'll talk briefly about what I mean by this. And secondly, why do you want to join X company, right? Like Facebook, DoorDash, Amazon, why do you want to join that? And I've seen very generic answers here too, right? Like, so I think the meta point being that spend enough time uh, on these questions as well. It's super important. Yeah, as I was saying, like, don't wing these questions. These answers also should have a structure. And uh, that also applies to any other casual question, right? I think it's even more so uh, important if you are a fresh college graduate or if this is your first job that you're applying for as a PM, right? So you need to be, you need to convey that structure in every answer and how you've thought about, you know, your past experiences, how you were thinking about your future. And you just practice these two questions <clears throat> again and again. 
because they are they you you'll be surprised right because that's the if that's the first question i asked you and if you answer it in a very casual manner versus in a structured manner you're kind of kind of setting the tone for the interview right like then i am going to be like wow this this person is all prepared and you know i, I look forward to interviewing that person so make sure you don't win these let's let's take an example here right so tell me about yourself right typically people start reciting their resumes and i think that's a blunder because they already have your resume they've seen your resume so you don't really have to go point by point about what you've done so i would say like you should have a one line summary that talks about your career so far like you have x year or n years of product management experience as i started off in the earlier slides right yeah you talk about your undergrad uh, talk about your uh, p school or your post grad if you have that if you think that you know let's say you're not an undergrad Uh, your undergrad is not in computers or you've not in the masters don't worry don't you don't have to talk about it but use your uh, background to highlight things that matter in the job then talk about the last latest role that you are in and any achievement that you have in that role so as i was saying i would say like hey i am a product manager for alexa shopping task with the role to reduce accidental voice orders and then i would give an interesting fact about it or an achievement like for example super bowl commercials that have the word alexa in it earlier they used to kind of uh, activate all the alexas of audiences that were listening then we had to come up with uh, a design of how to you know stop that so basically how do you define intended versus unintended uh calls to alexa right so that's something that that's super interesting again like it doesn't have to be as fancy or something but i'm sure if you dive deep enough into your background you'll come up with some uh, significant achievement it could be like hey conversion from x to y percent or you know million dollar impact by the project etc then uh, other companies that if you have more than one companies talk about those roles but don't spend too much time again i would just keep it short and i would definitely talk about what motivates you uh like you know are you driven by enterprise products are you driven by consumer products are you driven by fast paced environment are you driven by you know, healthcare space right it could be anything so find what really drives you and use it here right and and don't say without meaning uh what you're saying right because then it comes across as practiced and something that you're not uh, serious about so make sure and this is where you need to introspect and spend that time on, on understanding hey why it matters let's talk about the other question right why are you joining this company <clears throat> so i always break this into two parts right first i'll talk about why am i looking for a job right now so that means you know whatever i am doing right now why is change so much important to me and uh, you know maybe because my growth has stagnated i've learned enough uh, i i want to try new tech i want to try new space blah 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 right so that's the first part the second part would be why am i joining this company and then again give a personal example there like for example if it's amazon you can talk about like how every time you place an order and the order shows up at your doorstep like everyone is like i i feel elated right like it's like as if you open a gift or you can talk about like how people in your life they're everyone just so impressed by amazon or they use amazon similarly for facebook or or whatever company that is i would try and use a personal anecdote it kind of uh, comes across as genuine uh, so yeah so basically if you see right like you need to spend time on these questions you can't be uh, not prepared or just quote things like because you are making this world a better place or some generic answer you make sure you talk specifically about why you are interested in, in that company so let's look at what are the some uh, again I, i think we touched upon this but let's quickly look at this what are some of the questions right like depending on the company the the type of questions would change so amazon is going to focus more on behavioral questions or leadership principles uh facebook would be uh, initial rounds at least would be product design product metrics or goal setting but however like no matter what company you interview with eventually in the later round or some some part of the interview will always be behavioral questions and again the, the tell me about yourself and why this company that 
actually that is that is outside of this that is always being asked like that's the first thing they'll ask you so forget that but even for the other types of questions behavioral questions will come into play eventually if not up front right so again we'll focus on the behavioral aspects uh, so what does that behavioral question look like right it's typically hey tell me about a time when you had to deliver a project when you had no resources you're dealing with it or tell me about a time uh you had a difficult colleague or you had to deep dive you had to look at data to make a decision or you had no data to make a decision etc right so you get you get the feel and i think if you look at amazon's uh leadership principles you'll see like you know what these kind of questions map to those so there's a it could be any any of these or so there's so many more questions than this but the the essence and the flavor is the same right so uh, so make sure you first understand what that question is and there's also a lot of follow up questions that typically you will hear that hey so like for example let's take the first bullet right you tell me about a time when you had to deliver a project with limited resources so what did you learn from that and what would you do differently things like that so there there will be follow up questions so make sure you're listening to that uh and again how do you prepare for these examples right like so this is where even the pre work when you if you've done your pre work well this is more revision right so you should think about your past projects like and it could be if you're like uh, from a fresh out of college you can talk about your internship so you could talk about any other thesis or projects that you've done and uh, make sure that you take the time to literally write down everything and uh, so i personally follow this approach even today right if i'm interviewing i will go through all my important projects and understand write it down saying hey why was this done why was this project important and i, I just start from there and then you just start with hey what well, what were you trying to solve you know why was how was the project identified was it identified by the management or was it i was a, did i identify it or the team identify it using like customer feedback or data etc what was my role in that so i start uh, i highly recommend that you do the same where think about your past experiences and and just write them down like why are those that's important and sometimes i've also seen you may think that the examples are not that great but the more you start thinking about the more you start writing about it you you realize that wow you know what that problem that you solved was a really interesting problem so make sure don't don't ignore any examples yeah let's talk about the framework right like i've seen so many frameworks out there or the star circles and i'm sure there are like 10 more uh honestly it does not matter what framework you select because it's not like you're going to answer saying hey let me talk about the star framework and then you want to start your answer right i think what matters is that uh you pick the framework that it could be a mix of these it could be something that you're comfortable with and uh so pick that and be consistent uh so make sure all your answers are like you follow the same uh framework uh so make sure that Uh, your answer is complete again irrespective of the framework so you're talking about problem statement and and i have a special slide on problem statement so we'll talk about that but problem statement data how do you define success learning trade offs etc so no irrespective of the framework make sure you're talking about these now this is so important i cannot uh, like if i had to emphasize one thing today right if the top 3 takeaways this would be one of that that if when i ask a question to the uh, as an interviewer right i've seen so many times that uh, the people are so anxious to answer it and like they just right away start answering it even before listening to that entire question right especially at amazon you'll see that the question is pretty long like there's a first part there's a second part etc so make sure that you write down the question and if you didn't understand it or you missed part of it say it out aloud again summarize the question and also write every follow up question right as as i said like tell me about a time when you did xx whatever and then what was uh, the learning and how did you measure success and whatever right so what were the challenges so write all of that down and what that does that actually does two important things one is 
you actually start, you make sure that when you're answering, even if you emphasize on one part of the question more than the other, you don't lose track of the other questions. So you can come back and answer those, the, the remaining questions. And um, that is a big mistake, which can cost you, right? Because if I asked you what were your learnings and you just forgot about that question, sub question, then obviously it's not a, a good impression. Secondly, I think, and more importantly, when you write down the question, it also gives you time to think about your answer and think about which example you want to talk about, right? Like, so you may have like five, six examples that you you want to talk about, and you realize that let's say this question is about data. Like, tell me about a time when you had to deep dive in data to make a decision. So then you can think about, hey, yes, this is my answer that I want to talk about while you're writing this down, right? <clears throat> so make sure you use your time and it's okay to tell the interviewer that hey let me take two minutes let me write this down so i don't forget uh, it's it's completely fine to do that again okay, like make sure your answer covers we kind of spoke about this a little in the framework but make sure you cover all of these aspects right the problem statement i mean it is one of the most important things that you will talk about. And again, like we'll talk about it a little more depth, but talk about the problem statement, why the problem was important, what was your role, like were you the PM, were you a data analyst, blah, blah, blah. Who were the stakeholders, internal as well as external? What was the approach taken, your trade-offs, challenges? You learned something, then you had to change direction, et cetera. So state all of that. And what was the outcome? So again, this is the data. Talk about how you measured it and how were you tracking it? And then any learnings or any interesting anecdotes that, that you can talk about, right? So you, you can back up your uh, story that way. Yeah, let's talk about problem statement. So yeah, this is one of the most important aspect of the interview. And I've seen I've seen kind of contradictory advice here outside, right? Like where people say, hey, don't rat hold too much on the problem. Make sure you're talking about the solution. Uh, but I actually do not agree with that, right? Because let's say if your interview is 45 minutes long and the meat of that conversation is going to be in like 35 minutes, right? With the first five minutes for introduction, last five for your questions etc so you have enough time right so you don't have to haste and 30 minutes is a lot right so make sure that you level set and you give the proper introduction of what was this company that you're part of especially if it's not a well-known company like how big is it how many customers what is your title and then talk about why that problem was important like how did it affect the company how did it affect your team how did it affect the customers and i think it's okay to spend time on clarifying that especially if you you are in a space which is slightly niche let's say identity right so if i'm going to talk about identity access management let's say in my interview on facebook in two years from now whatever i'm just making this up but i i can't just start talking about like hey, how the token exchange happens or you know where is it stored on the cloud blah 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 i have to make sure that I level set and I, I talk about like what happens behind the scene, why is identity important and why the technicalities that I'm getting into are important, et cetera. So make sure you sp spend time on that and wherever possible, talk about data, talk about numbers, talk about conversion, et cetera. And again, be, be mindful that the data that you're quoting or any information that, that you use <clears throat> is not confidential. Right, because that again is a big red flag. Uh, you want to make sure it's not confidential. If you're unsure, just treat it as confidential and don't say, you could just say that you know, increase conversion by double digits uh, because I'm not sure that data is uh, public. So I, I don't want to say, and you can just say that out loud. So the interviewer would appreciate the fact that you are cognizant of, of it. Then again, the, uh, the other part of your answer, right? Like you talk about, Again, sorry, there's a typo here, forgive me for that, but clearly say your role versus the role of the team, uh, the I versus we trap. So you can talk about, uh, I've seen this again, like this is something I've seen so many times and certain cultures especially can't, you know, there's this V, I've seen especially uh, on the East Asian side, uh, a lot of times I've seen our uh, candidates use we instead of I even though they may have single-handedly done that, right? So make sure you don't fall into that trap. Uh, wherever it was you, be very clear that it was you. Wherever it was a team, 
tell about the team. Even then, you should talk about what was your, the distinction between you and what the team did, etc. And again, talk about uh, you know these are things I've seen people ignore. For example, if you know someone left from the team, like your development manager left, or your manager changed, or things like that, right? Personal changes happen all the time, and people don't uh, seem to talk about those in the interviews because that does uh, it's it's a factor, right? As of leadership and empathy, it's definitely a factor. So talk about that, and then talk about your hypothesis, how you came up with it. Again, role of data. Wherever possible, there are cases where there's no data. Like for example, Alexa Shopping, I was mentioning it had no data because there's no competitor out there, or we haven't done that for uh, for the for a long time. So there's no data. So that it's purely hypothesis. You test and you you kind of move forward. So make sure you you state that if there's no data, why there isn't, and then talk about trade offs. Talk about how you learned, what you learned, and it's okay to be vulnerable and say, hey, you know what, I I uh, I maybe assumed things which I shouldn't have, or I did not involve a stakeholder that I should have involved that stakeholder, that would have helped me prepare my hypothesis is a hypothesis in a better way. So show that vulnerability. You don't have to be like, hey, you're like the best, uh, you know, you can fix all problems, like because no one's that way, right? So so make sure it's all natural and you talk about your mistakes. And in the end, obviously summarize your answers and make sure you answer all the parts of the question. So that's where that writing comes into play. Mock interviews, this is so important. Again, I think a lot of people just take it for granted uh, and don't do enough of these. Take written feedback, uh, practice with friends, your fellow applicants or whoever can help you. Take written notes, don't rat hole your answers. Even if you do rat hole, make sure you anchor it back to the main question that was asked. Uh, I'm sharing my email, I definitely wanna help, uh, but again, it's time permitting uh, between my job and, and other duties, but happy to help. Uh, quickly, let's talk about the writing assessment. Uh, sometimes you'll get the writing assignment and it's very similar, like tell me about a time when you had to work on a project that was X or Y or whatever. So it's, again, you'll cover everything that we spoke about, but uh, keep your sentences short and clear. And there's so much, like if you Google, I'm sure there's this uh, article that's uh, you know, vital right now that talks about Amazon style of writing. But uh, it's super important that uh, you know you keep it short and clear so that you don't lose the reader. Uh, add data wherever possible. Don't add graphs, pictures, even if they're important, add to the appendix. Yeah, use direct speech, don't use indirect. And all last point to, to multiple iterations. Like you see, I had a typo, even if I, when I did, I have done two iterations. I wish I could have done the third, but I didn't. Anyway, so you will see that there's always a scope uh, for improvement. So make sure you catch all typos and, and, and do multiple iterations. Yeah, in the end, I'd just like to say all the best. Uh, and I'm happy to help wherever I can. I'm, I intend to publish some of this on my Medium blog as well. So follow me there and, and email. I'll, uh, I, as, as I said, time permitting, I'll be more than happy to help and answer any questions. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. And wish you all the very best.